हाई गाइज टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न दट प्रोकोरियोटिक सेल स्ट्रक्चर एंड फंक्शन यू विल गेट कम्प्लीट इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट प्रोकोरियोटिक सेल मेम्ब्रेन इंक्लूजन बॉडीज साइटोप्लाज्मिक मैट्रिक्स द प्रोकोरियोटिक साइटोस्केलीटन राइबोजोम न्यूक्लियाइड एंड प्लाज्मिट्स इफ यू हैव एनी डाउट रिलेटेड दिस टॉपिक दैन मैसेज इन द कॉमेंट सेक्शन फर्स्ट वी स्टार्ट विद द प्रोकोरियोटिक सेल मेम्ब्रेन द प्लाज्मा मेम्ब्रेन्स ऑफ प्रोकोरियोटिक सेल्स आर पर्टिकुलरली इम्पॉर्टेंट बिकॉज दे मस्ट फील एन इनक्रेडिबल वेराइटी ऑफ रोल्स इन अडिशन टू रिटेन द साइटोप्लाज्म द प्लाज्मा मेम्ब्रेन आल्सो सर्व्स एज सेलेक्टिवली परमेबल बैरियर इट अलोज पर्टिकुलर आयॉन्स एंड मॉलिक्यूल्स टू पास आइदर इन टू आर आउट ऑफ द सेल वाइल प्रिवेंटिंग द मोमेंट ऑफ अदर्स द मेम्ब्रेन प्रिवेंट्स द लॉस ऑफ एजेंशियल कॉम्पोनेंट्स through leakage while allowing the movement of other molecules because many substances cannot cross the plasma membrane without assistant transport systems are used for such a task as nutrient uptake waste excretion and protein secretion the prokaryotic plasma membrane also is the location of a variety of crucial metabolic processes that is respiration photosynthesis and the synthesis of lipids and cell wall constituents finally the membrane contains special receptor molecules that helps prokaryotes detect and respond to chemicals in their surroundings clearly the plasma membrane is essential to the survival of microorganisms The most widely accepted model for membrane structure is the fluid mosaic model of Singer and Nicholson which proposes that membranes are lipid bilayers within which proteins float. The model is based on studies of eukaryotic and bacterial membranes. TEM that is transmission electron microscopy studies were particularly important when membranes are stained and examined by TEM. it can be seen that cell membranes are very thin structures about 5 to 10 nanometer thick and that they appear as two dark lines on either side of a non stained interior this characteristic appearance has been interpreted to mean that the membrane lipids is organized into sheets of molecules arranged end to end within the lipid bilayer small globular particles are visible these have been suggested to be membrane proteins lying within the membrane lipid bilayer the chemical nature of membrane lipids is critical to their ability to form bilayers most membrane associated lipids are structurally asymmetric with polar and non polar ends and are called amphipathic the polar ends interact with water and are hydrophilic The non-polar hydrophobic ends are insoluble in water and tend to associate with one another. In aqueous environments, amphipathic lipids can interact to form a bilayer. Two types of membrane proteins have been identified based on their ability to separate it from the membrane. Peripheral proteins are loosely connected to the membrane and can be easily removed. They are soluble in aqueous solutions and make up about 20 to 30 percent of total membrane protein. About 70 to 80 percent of membrane proteins are integral proteins. Integral proteins like membrane lipids are amphipathic. integral proteins can diffuse laterally in the membrane to new locations but do not flip flop or rotate through the lipid layer carbohydrates often are attached to the outer surface of plasma membrane proteins where they have important functions coming to the inclusion bodies inclusion bodies are the granules of organic or inorganic material that often not clearly visible in a light microscope are present in the cytoplasmic matrix these bodies usually are used for storage for example carbon compounds inorganic substances and energy some inclusion bodies lie free in the cytoplasm for example polyphosphate granules cyanophysin granules and some glycogen granules examples of enclosed inclusion bodies are poly b hydroxybutyrate granules some glycogen and sulfur granules carboxysomes and gas vacuoles Many inclusion bodies are used for storage their quantity will vary with the nutritional status of the cell coming to the cytoplasmic matrix the cytoplasmic matrix is the substance in which the nucleoid ribosomes and inclusion bodies are suspended it lacks organelles bound by lipid bilayers often called unit membranes and is largely water about 70% of bacterial mass is water 
until recently it was thought to lack a cytoskeleton the plasma membrane and everything within is called the protoplast thus the cytoplasmic matrix is a major part of the protoplast then what is prokaryotic cytoskeleton the prokaryotic cytoskeleton when examined within the electron microscope the cytoplasmic matrix of prokaryotes is packed with ribosomes for many years it was thought that prokaryotes lacked the high level of cytoplasmic organization present in eukaryotic cells because they lacked a cytoskeleton recently homologous of all three eukaryotic cytoskeletal elements that is microfilaments intermediate filaments and microtubules have been identified in bacteria and one has been identified in archaea the cytoskeletal filaments of prokaryotes are structurally similar to their eukaryotic counterparts and carry out similar functions they participate in cell division localize proteins to certain sites in the cell and determine cell shape coming to the organic inclusion bodies organic inclusion bodies usually contain either glycogen or poly b hydroxy alkanoids for example poly b hydroxy butyrate glycogen is a polymer of glucose units composed of long chains formed by alpha 1/4 glycosidic bonds and branching chains connected to them by alpha 1/6 glycosidic bonds poly b hydroxy butyrate that is phb contains polyhydroxy butyrate molecules joined by ester bonds between the carboxyl and hydroxyl groups of adjacent molecules usually only one of these polymers is found in a species but some photosynthetic bacteria have both glycogen and phb poly b hydroxy butyrate accumulates in distinct bodies around 0.2 to 0.7 micrometer in diameter that are readily stained with sudan black for light microscopy and are seen as empty holes in the electron microscope this is because the solvent used to prepare specimens for electron microscopy dissolves these hydrophobic inclusion bodies glycogen is dispersed more evenly throughout the matrix as small granules and often can be seen only with the electron microscope if a cell contains a large amount of glycogen staining with an iodine solution will turn them reddish brown glycogen and phb inclusion bodies are carbon storage reservoir providing material for energy and biosynthesis many bacteria also store carbon as lipid droplets A most organic inclusion body is the gas vacuole, a structure that provides buoyancy C to some aquatic prokaryotes. Gas vacuoles are present in many photosynthetic bacteria and a few other aquatic prokaryotes, such as Halobacterium, that is a salt-loving archaeon, and Threothrix, a filamentous bacterium. Gas vacuoles are aggregates of enormous numbers of small, hollow, cylindrical structures called gas vesicles. Two major types of inorganic inclusion bodies are seen in prokaryotes: polyphosphate granules and sulfur granules. Many bacteria store phosphate as polyphosphate granules or volutin granules. Polyphosphate is a linear polymer of orthophosphates joined by ester bonds. Thus the volutin granules function as storage reservoirs for phosphate. Important components of cell constituent such as nucleic acids. In some cells they act as an energy reserve and polyphosphate can serve as an energy source in reactions. These granules are sometimes called metachromatic granules because they show the metachromatic effect. Inorganic inclusion bodies can be used for purposes other than storage. An excellent example is the magnetosome which is used by some bacteria to orient in earth's magnetic field. Many of these inclusion bodies contain iron in the form of magnetite. This is about prokaryotic inclusion bodies. Let's come to the ribosome. Ribosomes are very complex structures made of both protein and ribonucleic acids that is RNA. They are the sites of protein synthesis. Cytoplasmic ribosome synthesizes proteins. Plasma membrane ribosomes make proteins for transport to the outside. The newly formed polypeptide folds into its final shape either as it is synthesized by the ribosome or shortly after completion of protein synthesis. The shape of each protein is determined by its amino acid sequence. 
Special proteins called molecular chaperons or simply chaperons aids the polypeptide in folding to its proper shape. Prokaryotic ribosomes are called 70S ribosomes. 70S ribosome made up of two subunits that is 50S and 30S. The S in 70S and similar value stands for Swedberg unit. This is the unit of sedimentation coefficient, a measure of the sedimentation velocity in a centrifuge. The sedimentation coefficient is a function of a particle's molecular weight, volume and shape. Heavier and more compact particles normally have larger Swedberg numbers or sediment faster. Coming to the nucleoid. Prokaryotes lack a membrane delimited nucleus. The prokaryotic chromosome is located in an irregularly shaped region called the nucleoid. The prokaryotes contain a single circle of double stranded deoxyribonucleic acid that is DNA. But some have a linear DNA chromosome and some such as Vibrio cholerae and Borrelia burgdorferi. The causative agents of cholera and Lyme disease have more than one chromosome. Both electron and light microscopic studies have been important for understanding nuclear structure and function, especially during active cell growth and division. The nucleoid has a fibrous appearance in electron micrographs. The fibers are probably DNA. It is possible to isolate pure nucleoids. Chemical analysis of purified nucleoids reveals that they are composed of about 60% DNA, 30% RNA and 10% protein by weight. In Escherichia coli, the closed DNA circle measures approximately 1400 micrometer or about 230 to 700 times longer than the cell. Obviously, it must be very efficiently packaged to fit within the nucleoid. Bacteria do not use histone proteins to package their DNA. Coming to the last one, plasmids. In addition to the genetic material present in the nucleoid, Many prokaryotes and some yeast and other fungi contain extra chromosomal DNA molecules called plasmids. Borrelia burgdorferi carries 12 linear and 9 circular plasmids. Plasmids play many important roles in the lives of the organisms that have them. Plasmids are small double-stranded DNA molecules that can exist independently of the chromosome. But most non-plasmids are circular. Linear plasmids possess special structures or sequences at their ends to prevent their degradation and to permit their replication. Plasmids are able to replicate autonomously. Single copy plasmids produce only one copy per host cell. You will see about bacterial cell wall and capsule in the next video.